All right. <clears throat> if you're listening to this, then you're uh, doing your homework, and that's a good thing. Um, the story I want to focus on right now is called Bullet in the Brain, and it's written by Tobias Wolf. Tobias Wolf is like um, one of the authors that I'm kind of into right now. Um, he's written a couple of other good things, This Boy's Life, and um, a book that I'm currently reading called Old School. So I wanted to share this one with you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to read this. I want you to follow along with me, and then I'm going to actually do my lecture as well. So there will be some points where I stop and uh, mention certain things. So if you just follow along, you should be all right. All right. Without further ado, here we go. Bullet to the brain. Bullet in the brain. Tobias Wolf. Anders couldn't get into the bank until just before it closed. So of course the line was endless, and he got stuck behind two women whose loud, stupid conversation put him in a murderous temper. Okay, we gotta stop right there because we have to realize a few different things. One, Anders is obviously the protagonist. He's the main person, the person that we're gonna follow. But what's, inter <clears throat> what's interesting about this is that he didn't get to the bank just until it closed. So, of course, there's going to be this long line. And like anybody knows, especially in today's society, when you have to wait for things, that's when things just get tense, right? And the fact that he barely made it into the bank, if if he's 10 minutes late, the bank is closed. He doesn't get in. So um, it's interesting that he's here and this stuff is happening, okay? And it's um, it's funny because the tone is very negative. He's in an endless line, and he got stuck. And he's behind two women whose loud, stupid conversation put him in a murderous temper. All negative connotations, negative tone. Okay, And that says something a little bit to us about Anders as a person. All right. <clears throat> Line six. He was never in the best of tempers anyway. Anders, a book critic known for the weary, elegant savagery with which he dispatched almost everything he reviewed. All right, break. <clears throat> we know now that he's a book critic. And when you're a book critic, that means you basically you're critiquing something. And anytime somebody critiques something, feelings get hurt. But this is a guy who doesn't care. He doesn't mind hurting feelings. He's okay with saying something is garbage, right? He's not worried about it. And we know that because it says his elegant savagery, with which he dispatched almost everything he reviewed. He's not a very positive person, okay? And you'll see that throughout... Um, the way Tobias Wolf writes Anders. Okay. Line nine. With the line still doubled across the rope, one of the tellers stuck a position close sign in her window and walked to the back of the bank, where she leaned against a desk and began to pass the time with a man shuffling papers. Pause. Okay. So he's already in a bad mood. He's in this long line. And then the lady at the front closes her desk, puts a position close sign in her spot and then goes to the back and talks to somebody who's already there this is a problem for anders because he's gonna say something he's gonna notice that it's a problem for him it's like somebody once said have you ever noticed that when you're in a rush to get somewhere like everything happens you catch all the red lights you catch the train like everything is trying to keep you from getting somewhere well Anders is in the rush. He doesn't want to be there in the bank, right? And he's waiting in this long line. He's listening to this stupid conversation. And to make things worse, the lady in the front who has to help him closes her line and goes to the back and talks to somebody. That's annoying, and I'm sure he's annoyed. The woman in front of Anders broke off their conversation and watched the teller with hatred. Oh, that's nice, one of them said. She turned to Anders and added, confident of his accord, one of those little human touches that keeps us coming back for more. Okay, so the stupid women and their stupid conversation stop and take notice that the lady goes to the back, and they notice that Anders is mad too, so that she's like trying to be sarcastic. She's like, oh, that's so nice. You know, she could help us, but no, she's going to quit. They know that Anders is just as pissed off as them and just as mad, so she turns to him and is like, you know, she tries to get him on her side. But what she doesn't know is that the Anders doesn't have sides. He doesn't care about anybody. Okay, so watch what he says. Okay, here we go. Line 17. Anders had convinced his own towering hatred. Uh, excuse me. Anders had conceived his own towering hatred for the teller, but he immediately turned it on 
the presumptuous crybaby in front of him. Damned unfair, he said. Tragic, really. If they're not chopping off the wrong leg or bombing your ancestral village, they're closing their positions. And this is Anders' smart way of saying, you know what, lady? Don't even talk to me. I don't like you. I don't care for you. Yeah, it sucks, but you know what? Get over it. So he compares it to things that are really tragic, like chopping off the wrong leg or bombing your ancestral village, right? So he's being hyperbolic. He's being a smart ass, really, right? And then <clears throat> line 22, she stood her ground. I didn't say it was tragic, she said. I just think it's pretty lousy. It's a pretty lousy way to treat your customers. Line 24, Anders coming back. Unforgivable, Anders said. Heaven will take note. I want to bring this um, to your atten attention when he says heaven will take note. He's trying to say God is watching. And because she did this horrible thing, he's making a note of it. Now, I think this is interesting because later on you'll see that this is a little bit of foreshadowing. I mean, hello, the title of the story is Bullet in the Brain. Somebody's going to catch one. We'll see who. But heaven will take note. It's kind of foreshadowing. Somebody, something's going to happen. Somebody's going to get hurt. Line 25. She sucked in her cheeks but stared past him and said nothing. Anders saw that the other woman, her friend, was looking in the same direction. And then the teller stopped what they were doing. And the customers slowly turned and silence came over the bank. This is a creepy moment. Suddenly everybody is looking in the same direction and Anders is not. And the bank gets quiet. Two men wearing black ski masks and blue business suits were standing to the side of the door. One of them had a pistol pressed against the guard's neck. The guard's eyes were closed and his lips were moving. To me, I always picture him like saying a prayer or something like, oh my God, please God help me, blah, 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 whatever. This is what I see. The other man had a sawed-off shotgun. Keep your big mouth shut, the man with the pistol said, though no one had spoken a word. One of you tellers hits the alarm, you're all dead meat got it so these are the robbers talking you know the the guy's like don't say anything and nobody's even said anything and then the other guy's like if you hit the alarm you're all dead meat right got it and then the, the line 36 the tellers nodded line 37 oh bravo andrew said dead meat he turned to the woman in front of him Great script, eh? The stern, brass-knuckled poetry of the dangerous classes. So here we are. This whole thing is happening. The bank is being robbed. And all Anders can think to do is critique the guys on what they're saying. Like, these guys are coming in and robbing. And normally people are, like, scared and they're worried. And they're like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? But not Anders. The first thing he says is like, oh, my gosh. Look, these guys are so cliche. They, they come in and they're like, don't anybody say anything. Nobody's even saying anything. Then they tell everybody, you're dead meat. Come on. Who writes like this, right? It sounds like a bad sitcom is what he's thinking. Line 40. Beautiful line. She looked at him with drowning eyes. Drowning eyes. I mean, that's just a beautiful metaphor for saying she was crying. I mean, if her eyes are drowning, that means they're submerged in water. And that's what crying is, right? Beautiful line. 41. The man with the shotgun pushed a guard to his knees. He hand... He handed up the shotgun to his partner and yanked the guard's wrist up behind his back and locked him together with a pair of handcuffs. He topped him to the floor with a kick between the shoulder blades. Then he took the shotgun back and went over to the security gate at the end of the counter. He was short and heavy, and he moved with a peculiar slowness, even torpor. Buzz him in, his partner said. The man with the shotgun opened the gate and sauntered along to the line of tellers, handing each of them a hefty bag. When he came to the empty position, he looked over at the man with the pistol who said, Whose slot is that? Anders watched the teller. She put her hand to her throat and turned to the man she'd been talking to. He nodded. Mine, she said. Then get your ugly ass in gear and fill the bag. There you go, Anders said to the woman in front of him. Justice is done. So let's take a break right there. And then um, this is what I love about this. Anders is like taking note of this. And earlier they were so mad at this woman because she closed her teller line. And here she is with the bank robbers getting in trouble for being not by her teller line. So this is a way that Anders is like, 
there you go. You wanted her to be in trouble. You wanted her to, you, you hated her for a minute because she closed her line. Justice is done. She got in trouble.